Hey everybody, welcome to this week's 20 minute or less art tip. So today I'm going to show you how I start a painting, which I do it in somewhat of a grisaille type painting, which means it's just a value study. Now, if I've totally confused at this point, don't worry about it. Forget that big grisaille word. If you want to look it up, you can. But let's think about that other word, value. So value in a painting is light and dark. And it is one of the most important elements in a painting. If you don't have your lights and darks correct, then your painting is never going to be strong. So that's one of the foundations I think it's just so important to start with. Now, I like to think of it as I'm going to put the bones of my painting in. And once I have the right bone structure, then all I have to do is add some skin on top, which would be the color and the details toward the end. So I don't know if you've ever tried this. A lot of times, if you're just, especially if you're just starting to paint, you look at what your subject is and you get overwhelmed and just sometimes excited, but in a bad way about all the details. Well, if the value is not correct in that ending painting, then all those details don't matter. And here's another little hint. Your eye visually doesn't see all the details that a photograph allows you to see in the first place. So let's take all that pressure off. So I'm going to show you the photo reference that I'm using. All right. Now that you've seen my picture, I'm going to show you how I get this wash started. What I'm going to be using is burnt sienna. Now, there are many artists that do this in other colors, and that's fine. Burnt sienna works. Sometimes I'll use yellow ochre. Sometimes I'll use blue, depending on ultramarine blue, depending on the subject. But nine times out of ten, I'm going to use burnt sienna. And I like to use Gamblin Fast Mat or Griffin Alkyde because they dry a little bit faster. So that goes on and sets up so that I can begin working on the actual tone and color of my painting once I get this value under painting done. So let's look at my palette and see just kind of the consistency that the paint's going to be. So as we get started, I like to use a flat hog bristle brush. I have two sizes that I really like out here. One is a number 10 rosemary, one is a number eight trachel brush, both really good hog bristle brushes. Um, your brush size depends on the canvas you're using. The larger the canvas, the larger the brush, but rarely do I go smaller than a number eight or a number six in a trachel or a rosemary. Now, the two paints I mentioned are here. Two good ones to start with that dry really fast is the Gamblin Fast Matte and the Griffin Alkid. And I go back and forth from one to the other, but they work, both work really well. So what we wanna do to get started is to take a little Gamsol, which is what I use for solvent. I like it because it has absolutely no odor, very low toxicity. And I'm gonna get a little bit, I'm using the Fast Matte here, and I'm gonna make a puddle. So you see, I'm really thinning this paint down. Like I said, we're gonna make a wash. So the consistency of my paint is almost gonna be like watercolor. Sometimes when I start my paintings and start these uh, beginner value studies, they'll even run a little bit. So I get a nice puddle going to get started. Take one more look at the reference photo right here. And now I'm gonna to begin to lay in my value underpainting. I'll start off if I see some shapes that really stand out to me. I'll kind of lay those in first. Doesn't have to be distinct at all. And then I'm gonna to start toning this canvas. So I'm basically just laying these shapes in. Right now, it's all about the shape, more so than the actual value or the actual light and dark. So yeah, if you remember the reference photo, there were all those trees in there. They're not important yet. They'll come later. I don't tone my sky 
unless it's a very dominant sky with lots of really strong cloud formations in it. If it is a painting about the sky and it has those elements happening, then I will treat them as the same way as I'm doing this. So I'm just kind of laying these masses in. Now I do see that the bank of this pond is a little darker over here. So I'm gonna go in and start to darken that up just a hair. Pull it in. You'll also see me use not only a brush with this underpainting, but rags as well. If there is a lighter area, I may just wipe it straight out, especially if it's like the side of a building or a very hard edge that's lit. Got a little light through here. Not gonna break this thing up too much, but I do want it noted that that is lighter. I've also got a large mass of leaves. I squint at my picture, and when I squint, I see this large mass of leaves that drifts through here from that tree. So I'm gonna place those. All right, I'm gonna come back to these darker areas. I'm not adding any more of the Gamsol, which is what I used to, to thin my paint with in the beginning. I'm just gonna use more of the fast mat into the puddle that I previously showed you. And I'm going to start to lay in the darker areas. There's a little bit of brush over here that's slightly darker than those yellow trees in the background and it makes a definite triangular shape. I'm gonna kind of pull that in. Think of this like a map. It's gonna help you get to where you're going in the painting and it's gonna help you get there so much faster. I like to use the burnt sienna because in my environment here in Mississippi, we have a lot of green in our landscape. The burnt sienna underneath the green just helps to soften and mute it down a little bit. So that color works really well for me. Now, normally I wouldn't do this, but just so you have a reference of where this is going, there is a strong tree through here. If you wanted to, and there's nothing wrong with it, you could add, the branches are really dark, you could add some of those branches just so that you see how this tree feels in the landscape. I would probably wind up painting over that before I laid them in permanently, but at least it gives you an idea of where your whole painting is going. Checking my values again. I think I'll push this just a hair darker. We tend not to go as dark as we need to when we paint. It's scary to go darker, but remember we want those values correct. And this backlit landscape is gonna have to have these dark shaded values to help that light show up. So there we are. So I hope this glimpse into how I start my paintings with a value underpainting will help you get started with correct values on your paintings. Try it, see how you like it. Remember, let that value painting set up a little bit before you start with your color, but it usually doesn't take long. And it's just gonna get you started on a better path to a more successful painting. I've also included a few examples at the end of this video of paintings from beginning value study to what they ended up in completion. So you can kind of see where I take this. So until I talk to you again, Hope you have some successful painting. Hope you have some enjoyable painting. And I'll see you next time.